Some people have told me even almost like, no, don't. Please, I, I need to see it so I can improve. Yeah. So I'm grateful. But whenever the videos come over, I have to take a deep breath because I'm about to find out the truth of that wave. Yeah, but it's so, so good to improve. Like it's I do it uh, for myself, like when a friend films me or something, I'm like, oh, I, I, now I can learn what I'm doing wrong. And second, I always tell people, watch it more than one time and learn to see the good things too, because that, that's what I learned to do with my videos, like from, from myself. Then put some music on top and watch it with a soundtrack. And then maybe you even like your style, you know, after a while. Then you're like, oh, maybe that weird arm is not that bad. Maybe it's my thing. <laughs> Ali, you're on this side of the camera. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me on this side of the camera. What's it feel like? Ah, a little bit strange, but I know how it feels later when I'm editing. So. Are you enjoying being an editor for the Nosara podcast? Yes, I'm, I'm enjoying learning about the community and all the people that live here and their projects and seeing you laugh with the guests and all the bloopers and stuff. Too. I don't think people realize how much goes into this, like how much editing, how much time this takes. And it's a whole team. Like it's not any one person. It's there's, there's like this is a bit of a machine. Yes, exactly. Like, um, the first time I saw you at the beach, I, I knew you as the podcast guy, you know? And, and yes, for the for other people, the impression is that that's you, the, the guy from the podcast, but they don't know there's a team, right? There's, uh, there's a Tian here setting up the cameras and the mics and the recording and then the editing. We have to um, make sure it's a good, a good uh, cut and that it flows and that it's listenable and enjoyable. So, yeah. So let's jump into you some of your history how, your background how you got to know Sara, wh and what brought you to where you're at right now so just give us a quick synopsis on uh, on where you came from and how you got here so most people don't know it but i'm the guy behind eq surf tv i've been doing that project for one year uh and yeah it's it's a mix between a passion project and a business uh but mostly a passion project uh, and just came about me wanting to do something I really care about. And that was making a surf movie. That was actually the first intent of the project. I think that might have been what got us to connect. When I met you and I heard you were working towards a surf movie project, that'll catch my attention. I'm a huge fan. I mean, a huge fan of, of just surf. Surf movies in general, old, new, in between. And I think that might have been where we connected. I really respect that you took a leap of faith to pursue what you want to do. Because like in my day job, I don't want to do it. I just do it because I need to and I have to. Yeah. You had the courage to do what you wanted inside of Nosara. My existence in Nosara, the only thing I want to do, like work-wise, if you call it, that is this. But the Nosara podcast cost an enormous amount of money and time. and But I want to do it, but it doesn't make me a dime. And I'm terrified of not being able to afford to live here. And whenever I meet someone who's willing to take a chance like that, just that pulls my heart, my attention, because I'm jealous. I don't have that courage. I'm, I'm going to leave this after we get done talking and I'm going to go work my butt off at my normal job. So first off, respect. Second off, how'd you get so courageous to do all this? Uh, yeah, out of, out of bad things, you know, like bad things produce good things, I think. So, um... The pandemic got me out of my previous job as a music teacher and as a teacher in general. Um, and yeah, I like that job too. But I felt I was doing a lot of stuff for other people. So when when that happened, I just I just said, no, I just really want to do something I really like. And that's for me. Um, yeah, and I just said I, I should go for it. I mean, I think it happened to a lot of people during the pandemic that they said this is enough i mean i mean things are messed up it's better to spend your life doing something you like and i i saw a lot of people going for it you know going for it for going for their projects and, and changing during this transition time so i think i'm just one more that did it um yeah and at the beginning it was just a surf movie and then it became a little i saw the interest in people being recorded you know people people asked me did you record me and i was like uh yeah and do you really care about that? Do you want the clips and stuff? And then I started doing doing it more as a collective effort and making people stoked with the videos. Yeah. It seems like 
you are doing exactly what you want to do. Is that right? Yeah, pretty close, pretty close. Like some weeks I'm like, yeah, this, this is it, you know, like, like I'm living how I want to live. I, I think in every um, change in my life or in life in general, I think I, I want to get closer to that point where I'm like, yeah, this, this is it. Like my previous job, I, I, I like it and I, I got to surf. So listen on your so, previous job. Yeah, here. so so I was a music teacher and technology teacher at Delmar Academy for three years. Shout and, out to Delmar. Yeah, and before that, I I was also a music teacher in another school in Herradura, Playa Jacó. So I, I have been teachers for s teaching for several years, and I like the job and I like the opportunities it gave me with the kids and for my um, my own personal life. You know, I got to surf and, and live where I wanted. But still, I felt like I wasn't doing all the projects I wanted to do. So, yeah, I took I took the leap of faith, and here we are. Where did surfing come in in your life? Kind of mid high school or something like that. I actually, the first time I surfed, the fir very first time I surfed was here in in Guiones. Really? Yeah. What so, year was that? Yeah, it was like maybe 1999. And yeah, I came with a friend that had a house in Garza, Garza Hills, and she had a surfboard and yeah, I just went for it. And then I saw that Haco was pretty close to San Jose where I lived and I started going like every two weeks or once a month or wherever what my dad uh, was kind enough to drive me. Or I actually began to take the bus with my brother and just go for a day trip. So it sounds like when surfing got in your life, it hit you pretty hard, like it was strong. Yeah, 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 totally. It, it took, uh, took hold of my life. Now we yeah. share a fascination for older surf information. Where did you get yours from? Because for me, it was just, I'd watch any video that was available and they used to be on the tapes. And that's what kind of got me pulled in. And that's when I started seeing board evolution and discovery of new waves. Um, so video is kind of what pulled me in. And also I'd read any magazine I could, but they'd only come once a month. So I just wanted more and more. So that's why I got into it. But what's your story? Yeah, totally. So it's magazines for me at the beginning. Magazines, you know, I had a supermarket close to, to my place that they sell kind of good magazines, a good magazine selection. I mean, they had surfer and surfing and transport. Trans surf. So I went like, almost every day just to take a peek and it was a little bit expensive for me to be buying magazines actually you know so i just went there and kind of take a peek awesome. and wait for the next one and w when i started i started with a shortboard which was a big mistake uh i mean the guy that rented the boards in hako didn't care for for me really because he said take this and it was just a, a potato, chip. potato chip shortboard it's like what is he doing but that's what i wrote for years until until I grabbed a surfer magazine and it had Rob Machado on the cover uh, surfing in Pavones and it said Costa Rica and I'm like what? It blew your mind. Yeah so I opened it and it had a, a big article about Sprout a movie from from Thomas Campbell. Shout out to Thomas Campbell. Yeah so about alternative surfboard riding right so basically no shortboards and that was beautiful. It was the, that was around 2002, 2003, four, somewhere yeah, there? Yeah, something like that, something like that. I used and to take that video to my, my job and on my lunch break, I'd go put it in the VCR thing and I'd watch. That's yeah, and so, so the article was before the movie, right? So they, they were talking like Rob Machado, Thomas Campbell, and Joe Tudor about surfboards, right? And, and they were saying in one line, they say like, Rob Machado says like, like 90% of the people in the 90s we're riding the wrong surfboard. That's right. Yeah. I still say that every day out here in Guiones. Yes, exactly. So that line like blew my mind and I'm like looking at the pictures and they were riding fishes and stuff. And I'm like, what's, what's that, right? And yeah, a friend who shapes in, in Hermosa, uh, Fabio from Nika Surfboards, ah. he lent me a fish one day and I went to Hermosa to La Curva and rode the fish and I never went back. And he told me, man, you, you look cool and that, like, like you were turning and everything and like a skateboard. And I felt totally different. Like all the frustration went away and I'm like, okay, yeah, fishes it is. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw the movie 
And then I got into surf movies pretty heavily and downloaded, downloading from wherever I can. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how I got the movies. Maybe, I don't know if it was Napster or something similar to Napster, oh, you know, like LimeWire or something like that. I don't know. Something All right. Like so you're, you're pretty technological. You're into editing. You have a very a wider range of skills. Tell us, tell us just about some of the stuff you do between your guitar, your music stuff, your building pedals, like let people get to know you a little bit because you're a quiet guy. You're behind the camera and you're behind the podcast. You're here all the time, but you're not visual to people. I want to use this episode so people can get to know you. Yeah. So I spend more time with music than with video. Actually, uh, I began playing guitar like in high school, classical guitar. Uh, then I got into rock heavily and bought an electric guitar and got into that. Then I got into electronic music too. And maybe in having no money and really liking effect pedals, I began making effects pedals because I studied electrical engineering and I was like just trying to figure out how to like <laughs> the career I chose, you know, because I didn't really like it that much. I, I just didn't know what to do, you know. I wanted to study it. Um, Recording engineer, okay. audio recording. You know, I, I loved albums and the recording process, mics, producers, everything. So I wanted to study that, but in Costa Rica, I didn't have the opportunity. So I began to see that all the equipment is electrical equipment, you know, it's, it's circuits. That's how you record. So, so I said, okay, I'm staying in Costa Rica, so I'm gonna do electronic engineering. So we just learned the name of, of your company, like your, your, your passion project business yeah. and it's kind of ironic music connected your electrical engineering studies and degree, but you didn't intend it that way. You didn't go into it with the idea of I'm going to build pedals. It was, I'm broke, but I'd like to have another pedal. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and, and I was learning circuits like in, in, yeah, in university, like in college, learning some circuits and I'm like, okay, how does this apply to what I like? And I searched the, like the chip and search how that was used in audio. And then I figured out that it was used in audio so I could do something, you know? So I, I built my first one, just a simple distortion. Then I gave it up for quite a while, you know? And it wasn't until I got like a knee injury and I didn't surf like for two months or something that I said, okay, what, what do I do? And I started building pedals again. Uh, and then I got into selling them and stuff, uh, and now I'm on a break from it. Surf movie time. Surf movie. Let's talk Surf. about that. Tell us about your upcoming project. Yeah, so I'm, I pretty much filmed the whole 2021, and most of it is in Guiones. I was there like, I don't know, maybe half the week filming. Uh, and I always had the intent of making it a movie somehow. Um, and during that whole year, we were doing the surf wrap up uh, with Surfing Nosara. Shout out to Surfing Nosara for sponsoring the videos. And those videos were uh, a mix between all the surfers surfing on those sessions, right? But this movie is more about the surfers that caught my, my attention more and that got more camera time, right? So it's, it's more curated project. Uh, it's mostly Guiones, although we have a couple sessions up north just to mix it up. Um, yeah, and it's 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 already like twenty servers in the cast, and I'm I'm still feeling bad about a, another twenty servers that I want to include, but it's I, I'm I, I just can't. <laughs> I'm sick of the project already. <laughs> hey man, there's you, you gotta have some stuff for your next movie too. You yeah. can't fit it all in one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm conceptual in that thing. So I'm seeing it like this. This was 2021 movie with one camera that I had, with one look, and I have another camera now. It's 2022, and I want to do another project, and it's gonna be more traveling. You know, a little bit less Guiones. That's it's, awesome. So you'll have different flavors. Yeah, and the movie is coming. It's premiering in March. March. I'm, I'm probably going to do more than one premiere because I don't think everybody's going to come to, to just one night. So I want to do more than one movie night and just screen it like old school style, you know, like let's get together, 
maybe have some beers, watch the movie, uh, get everybody stoked, and, and go for the next one. Man, that sounds awesome. It's uh, it's fitting to do it that way because that's how surf movies evolved. It was a local community. Somebody got it together. They go to like a high school or something and premiere it. Yeah, and that's part of what I want to bring to Nazara, you know, like the surf movie culture, you know, like everybody's too much on Instagram and seeing 60 second clips or less. Attention spam is pretty low. Uh, so and, and you see it by yourself on a phone, you know, like I, I want I want everybody to see themselves on, on a big screen or see the surfers. Yeah, I record it on a big screen, get stoked and see like, oh, this is happening, you know, like, and I want to say to the Nosara surfing scene like uh we have something here you know like it is interesting it is worthy of being documented and it's it is worthy of going to a movie night about our scene you know like uh, you, you don't have to have kelly's later in the lineup to have something interesting our our surf scene is interesting because there's a lot of people doing it with passion in the water so that's what i want to document and, and bring bring to the table and yeah and i also want to get surf movies into the culture because i have talked with surfers that don't know movies like like i have so many favorite movies and i i named some and people are, are clueless and i'm like you haven't watched that like that's part of my i don't know my education in surfing or something man like it's that. so nice to hear you say that because this gives me a great chance to throw uh intern Etienne under the bus because he'll do anything to try to help on any level uh, of our work or assignments but he has no clue what I'm talking about when I reference old surf movies, or musicians for that matter. And um, I just want to publicly throw him under the bus for not knowing enough about surf right now <laughs> while, you, while, while you just said that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, it's not really just me and he and everybody else are like, man, Rich, you're a nerd on the weirdest things. Yeah, so maybe I want to do some surf movie nights that are not my videos but just my favorite movies from my collection i have to invite people. etienne yeah and invite people like etienne to <laughs> <laughs> he, he only knows how to watch it if it's 60 seconds or less on the phone yeah yeah exactly so yeah i don't know i, I want people to get into surf movies i know i, I don't know i learned a lot of, about surfing and surfing like really like even technique from the movies you know and about surfboards through the movies it's funny you say that i watch videos so many times especially when i was trying to learn how to nose ride i just couldn't figure it out i did what everybody did go to the end at the wrong time nose dive fall repeat i watched wing nuts art of longboarding and i watched on the endless summer too which i've seen thousands upon thousands of times i watched that to go to sleep every night actually because the first segment well after the alaska visit is costa rica and they went to witch's rock then they went to Playa negra and I used to fall asleep to that every night from 1999 to 2009. I watched it every night to go to sleep. But there's one longboarding segment where Wingnut goes up the wave face, walks all the way to the nose, and that's when I was like, that's it. You go to the nose when the board's on the way up. I never would have seen that without a video. And I'm telling you this story to say how much I resonate with what you're saying. I rewind videos. Where was the shoulder? Where, where was this? And then after moving to Nosara and having all these surf instructors and having a wave to actually practice on, that's when everything kind of took off. And videos kept that alive and that hope alive when I couldn't surf every day. When I didn't even live in Costa Rica, the videos kept my mind connected to surfing in some manner. So what you're doing to me is, is just really cool because it's going to bring other people who don't pay attention to video at all. Or they just look at it as just like the daily photo quick shot thing. There's a, there's, there's real life happening right now, every morning, right there on that beach. Exactly, exactly. There's, there's a real thing happening right there. And also one thing about the movies, and that's what I learned with the Thomas Campbell ones, is that you also have to watch the right movie. Because if you're watching the, the world uh, circuit, the WSL, you know, and you're watching Kelly Slater and those guys and those movies, uh, chances are you're gonna get pretty frustrating. With well, that's why everyone's on shortboards. Yeah, are fishes that are too small right now, and the lineup yeah. is because people see that that looks cool. Oh, I need to do that. Yeah, so it's a different wave. So it's different people. It's a different thing. What they watch to get stoked, and what they actually can do, 
is pretty different and that that brings a lot of frustration and, and and i mean it's nothing bad that you cannot write like that you know but with it's the, the truth yeah with with the fish movies i saw i was actually just seeing them trim or just do high lines or and simple cutbacks you know and, and they look so cool and at the same time i was like i can relate to that i can do that you know so so i'm like i'm going through, uh, to that scene, you know. I'm, I'm are your about. movies going to include that type of feel too, or is it just going to be the ripping Ticos at the highest level? Or are you going to include some of various variety so that other people resonate with it? Ripping Ticos and nice. and locals in any nationality that you want to bring because they're locals, anyways, you know. But um, it's mostly ripping, I, I have to say. Uh, but there's a good amount of longboarding too uh, because yeah i I've, I've so so there's flavor in it yeah there's flavor maybe maybe i want to get more of the in between someday like more of the fishes maybe the fishes there are are not so much in the movie right now there's like shortboarding and we have longboarding but i i i have been enjoying filming longboarding a lot because this is actually a very good longboarding wave and not so much a ripping wave so it's like i have the opportunity to film very good surfers like dorian and delilah just do some very cool classic long boarding uh, very high level actually so. at a wave that's built for it yeah exactly but like for the other surfers i'm always like where do you want to go let's go somewhere else you know like to really get a good wave uh and with them i asked dorian and he's like i want to stay here you know <laughs> just out front <laughs> let's go to baker's Right, and I'm like, okay, yeah. So I, can't, so. I don't blame him. Years ago, this is before the protests in Nicaragua. I took all my shortboards and just put them there. It's <laughs> up there. It works. It says it's a. Uh, or the area that I surf, I like it, but the boom, mm. and not a lot, but that, like, especially the boom. That's actually an A-frame, but like close to the beach. It's a wide open barrel. Huge, enormous fat guys like me actually can get barreled. And here, it. Oh, you see me try it all the time. The wave just kind of hits me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you just pop up uh, out of the wide water, you know, but you make it sometimes, so that's cool. <laughs> it's hard to get barreled here, man. Yeah. If you get barreled here, you're really doing something out of nothing. Oh, man, there's so many good surfers out there, too. We have one movie coming up. I'm guessing there's going to be more because you're trying to create a movie culture. So, yeah, I think you should consider in your second, third or fourth movies is alternative equipment at an alternative type wave. That yeah, would be fun because so, so, Robbie and Olo Alaya and, uh, and Coconut Harry and now No Star Surf, everybody's starting to get more foam yeah, and, yeah. and the equipment. Like when I first got here, it was still just diehard shortboards, and now people are starting to expand. I actually give a big shout out to Robbie from Olo Alaya because he brought in old classical equipment and became heavy dedicated towards fish and bigger type stuff. And on his podcast, actually, I think I fussed at him because I said, You're going to mess up the lineup. He's like, what do you mean, Rich? It's already crowded. And I was like, yeah, but they're all on the wrong board. You're going to put everyone on the right board yeah. and they're all going to start Into catching waves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, about like future projects and stuff. Yeah, I want to get more into alternative equipment. On that note, I just want to say I have a project. It's kind of underground and I don't want to say too much about it. But let's say we're building some boards and it's going to be alternative. Uh, and yeah, it, that's going to be out like at the end of the year and you're gonna see like some local shaping and local alternative surfboards and nice. that's gonna be pretty cool and another note is that i haven't put myself in in this movie i'm not on it but on future videos i'm, I'm gonna put a little bit of i think me. people would appreciate it more if they got to see you surf a little bit i know every time i could see the guy filming even just in the water I felt more connected to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought. I, I began just filming everybody else and not putting anything that had to do with my life, not even me walking or or not even like first person shooting or anything like that, you know? And then I started to do it a little bit because I'm, I'm like, what do I want to see in other people I follow? And it was like, yeah, I like when they show a little bit, you know? So I started to show my face a little bit. And now you're doing this podcast. Yeah. I'm proud of you, man. I don't know. I hope that project keeps running after this because nobody knows me <laughs> normally. It's like, oh, you're the guy from Mickey Surf TV. And you have a classic case of artist disease combined with an engineering mind. So that's like a, a beautiful, horrible combination in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and so so one thing I, I, I was thinking about just bringing to the table here is like naming a few surf movies and a couple of filmmakers I like so that maybe some people can Google stuff up. Yeah, let's hear it. Who, who influenced something. you? Okay, so I'm just going to rename it Thomas Campbell with Sprout and the Present. Uh, then I like a lot Jack Coleman, who films a lot of 8mm and stuff like that. And he did The Zone and another one. He, he transitioned one. over to digital a little late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, The Zone is... Is it The Zone? It's The Zone and there's another one that's called also The Zone something. The Zone. I forget the name. But it's The Zone and then the follow-up. And the follow-up is, yeah, it's digital. It's digital. And then I like a lot... Well, Jack Johnson movies. Big, big for me is September Sessions. And, oh, gosh. And that, that soundtrack was amazing, yeah. too. That's basically a perfect surf movie, you know, like just surf movie, not not like documentary, but just surf movie, just surfing with really good music, really cool shots, really cool place, really good surf. Transition, slightly personal with a little bit of backdrop. Yeah, some voiceovers in there, like here and there. That's perfect. Uh, I like Patrick Treff's Threat, which is more like documentary style, very slow, very long. You know, they talk about photographers and a guy that draws in the sand and stuff like that. So it's more mixed. Uh, yeah. And lately, and if you want to watch some heavy wave surfing, Lavese Las Manos from Nathan, Nathan Fletcher's movie, like from 10 years ago. I actually was pretty big fan of that movie because the soundtrack is all heavy metal band called Russian Circles and the whole movie is it's a whole album from them so it's very cohesive you know it's like the same band playing the whole the whole soundtrack uh, and i was a fan of his and and i saw him at the automercado and i was like oh you're Nathan fletcher and he was like yeah <laughs> oh joe g joe g from the globe movies i was thinking earlier is he going to mention anything from the whole john john series uh, in recent years uh yeah john john i well, Joe G did. Joe G did a whole lot of it. A lot of that yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, I was Joe. a big influence for a whole bunch of it. That Dion, uh, how do you say his eight, last name? Angus. Around Angus, him, yeah. Dion Angus. He he makes some cool movies. Yeah, see, they they kicked off more of like the vlog style on a trip style. Here was our yeah. Somewhere around when that started happening, that was interesting to me because it had just been like an actual formal movie, and then when it started transitioning into shorter type trips that was interesting but now it's gotten down to it's got to get you, get you catch your attention basically on instagram and it's free so it's very hard to make a living as a filmmaker it's very hard to make a living as a photographer it's it's damn near impossible so how do you contend with that in today's crazy world uh i mean i'm still going for the dream i'm still going for maybe i get to do something like that you know like actually make a movie or participate in something bigger with those kind of brands and those kind of names. I, I'm still hoping for that. But I actually think the solution is more going local. You know, if you go local, there's more interest and, and you can also just, yeah, collaborate with some local um, surf stores and surf schools and different businesses and different uh, surfers. And yeah, so I, I think going local is 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 better if you want to make it. I hope it works for you, man. I do. Me too. So yeah, Surf Movie is coming March. Keep an eye on the Instagram, Iki Surf TV, for for the update, for the flyer, and for the location and time and everything, all the details. And slap that stuff all on this episode. I'm yeah. excited. I'm yeah. excited to see your edit. On yeah. It. So because uh, you can give flyer, previews and flyer, teasers. Flyer here. <laughs> you know i can i can say this is camera one camera two well you're about to have uh opportunity for teasers like you, you could use this to show some the, the yeah, local yeah, people yeah. could see what's happening because i don't think i don't think they all know i think i think they, everyone knows there's cameras on the beach but i think most people have gotten used to the same pattern of happening the same shots kind of and then some photographers are off doing amazing things privately yeah so um, but this, this is what you're doing is something a little bit different we haven't had a real movie put together in a really long time yeah so i mean while you watch the teaser here i'm gonna put it here uh i i always go and try to get different angles you know because everybody's just right at the water right at, 
uh, on the sand, which looks pretty good sometimes. But I, I shot a lot from the hills and the bushes at the beginning, and I have done some alternative shots. So sometimes there's variety, even in Guiones, you know, that you're on the same beach. And yeah, I always try to, to get a different angle on things. Did you ever know, did you know, no, well, Graham used to shoot in the beach and Matt Vaughn and Alfredo Barquero and, yeah. uh, and James Reese. I mean, big shout out to those yeah. guys. That, those were, I didn't realize it at the time, those were special times. Yeah. I mean, everybody had a different angle about them or a different, something different and special. And I didn't realize, I just thought it'd keep going. I, I didn't know it would change. And um, now there's more photographers, but it's, it's, it's a different thing. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying it's different. Like it's a... Uh... Yeah, I think there's two things. First, I'm mainly a videographer, you know, like people ask me for photos and I might say I prefer to shoot video because that's what I do and it's going to be better, you know? Uh, and there's not so many people doing video as the main thing, you know, because Video takes so long, you know, to record it, you know. Also, to get something good, you need that the wave was good, you know, because with photo, you can just get one microsecond of a good thing. But with, with video, you have to get the people to do something good more than two seconds. If not, it's nothing. You're giving us medicine right now, though. And I keep laughing as you're talking because it's like, I don't want to see video because I realize how much I stink. <laughs> Some people, some people hate it when I share their videos and some people have told me even almost like, no, don't, please. Don't I, I need to see it so I can improve. Yeah. So I'm grateful. But whenever the videos come over, I have to take a deep breath because I'm about to find out the truth of that wave. Yeah, but it's so, so good to improve. Like Just I do it uh, for myself, like when a friend films me or something, I'm like, oh, I, I, now I can learn what I'm doing wrong. And second, I always tell people, watch it more than one time and learn to see the good things too because that that's what i learned to do with my videos like from from myself then put some music on top and watch it with a soundtrack and then maybe you even like your style you know after a while then you are like oh maybe that weird arm is not that bad maybe it's my thing you know what i mean and then you embrace it and then you like it you know so that's what i tell people i mean if you don't want the video it's okay but I think you can you can learn from from it and even learn to like it, you know, and that's a good thing. I'll hold on to that message and I, <laughs> I appreciate where you're coming from. I, I just wanted to give a shout out also to Graham, you know, because he helped me at the beginning <clears throat> uh, with equipment, tips, and we still do stuff together. So, yeah, big shout out to him because, yeah, he, he helped me at a time when I was like, should I do this or not? And that push helped me. Shout out to actually Josie Mar too, because he gave me the confidence of come shoot me and I'm, he's a pro and, and he's like, I, I believe in what you're doing, come shoot me. And shout out to you, Rich, because also a lot of words of encouragement, you know, like at the beginning with, with the videos and our lunches at Salajes, kept me going. I was like, yeah, maybe I have something going. I don't know, maybe I do. <laughs> I just have a lot of respect for somebody willing to try to do what they want. And also I just love surf, everything surf, photography, video and music. So we had a, I didn't expect to have as much in common with you and I had no idea you would be editing the podcast and we'd be, you'd become part of the team. So that's all a nice surprise. Yeah. Um, but finding people who want to edit video is hard. So you, you have a skill set you want to do that I think very few people well, very few people try to do something like this. It's hard. Like, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And also, I think mostly it is time consuming. I, I mean, I don't think people realize how much time I spend just to put a few stories about the sessions. Look, you, you have to watch the clips. You understand? Like, when you have photos, you can just open the, the gallery view and you know which ones are good right away. You know what happened. Well, with a video, maybe I just see white water and I have to watch it until the end to know that that was the wave where Rich uh, did a spin out in his film list. You know what I mean? And I have to watch 30 seconds for that or scroll, but still slow, you know? So, and then you have the hard drive real estate going on and you have to buy hard drive. So it's a well, lot of the work. internet, you need to upload all the clips you're trying to send out. Yeah. And, and, and then you have to film the stories. It's not just one picture. You have to spend 30 seconds. And, you know, the way I do it, I normally put some music in the background that usually goes a little bit with, with the surfing. So 
it takes a lot of time and not, not everybody is willing to do it. And yeah, the same or more with the podcast. I mean, if you have one hour plus of video and people talking, you have to go through it all. Uh, yeah, it's, it's time consuming. And, and that, I think that's what gets people out of video and, and maybe they stayed on photo. Photo is awesome. I love photography, you know, and I, I like to do it too, but, but I prefer video just because I like editing and I like music. So it seems I, like you have a spot in the marketplace to find your, your existence in that. I think, I mean, we have, we have good photographers. You, um, we have good photographers. We have very few people willing to commit to sitting down behind the computer and editing. So I think that deserves recognition. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I appreciate what's going on. And, um, I wish you the absolute best with this movie. And I look forward to seeing the next one and the next one, especially the alternative boards. I'll be really excited about that one. Yeah. And in the future, the goal is also to make a Nosara surf film festival, you know, like not only my movies, but some, I, I've seen some up and coming people that are doing videos, young, young, young people doing videos. So I would like them to get inspired and just make their, theirs and let's make it a collective. We should, we, we also have some, some musicians who come through. We're friends with G love. We were doing the Nosara roots yeah. festival. Yeah. Until I mean, COVID. Uh, so like we, maybe we could get something going there that make, makes it fun. In the past, I was worried about, do we want to turn this into Noosa and expose it too much? Nosara is already exposed. There is no lack of people knowing about this place. I think we need to now, try to have fun with it while we can and do something really cool with it. So I love yeah. that idea. I'd get behind that if you, if you wanted some help. And, and music wise and more surf culture in a broader spectrum, even locally, it's going to be pretty interesting. Especially even, locally. Yeah. Even if we just do it without people from the outside, right. just the surf movies from Guiones, from Nosara, just the local musicians. Uh, and just to tell a goal, the next movie, I want to make the soundtrack for it. You know, like I want it to be original soundtrack. That's going to take a lot of work, but I want to do it that way. But yeah, I want to, I want to, the activities to be more than the surf movie. I, I want to have live music and uh, maybe a f photo exhibit or something like that. Uh, we had one, at one time thought like maybe once a month, could we have like an artist collective? surf movies could spin of the local surfers local artists could even have their stuff on display local musicians could help with the soundtrack that's the goal and then maybe once a year have a bigger one where somebody something that garners the right attention and gets people to realize we do have something here i, th I think you nailed it earlier when you said i'm out there shooting at guiones and there's a lot of amazing things happening in the water here you might not think it but they are and with your vibe of getting the surf movie culture going we have a lot of artists in this community. We have musicians. We have all these things. They're here right now. Totally, totally. And we have a lot of surfers that are musicians, yeah, you know, true. and I want them to also, I, I, I want to do profiles on that too, you know, like show people that, yeah, it's happening. Well, hey, let's um, continue. I know the podcast that you see mostly have been pretty serious. We're in the middle of a high season. We got a lot of stuff going on and you've probably heard a lot more about this community than you ever cared to, <laughs> I would guess by now. Um, but I want to have fun with this podcast too. So let's get the surfers. Let's get the photographers. Let's get them all. I'd love to have Enrique Graham. Oh, good gosh. I'd love to have Graham on. He'll never come on a show, especially one of mine, but I would love to have him on. Um, just Enrique, all of them. Yeah. yeah Chico, yeah. everybody. I like, I'm, I'm happy to share with what you guys do and I'm, I'm proud to be here and I'm really grateful for the footage. I, I cringe at my surf photos and videos every week and I enjoy it too. It's just part of life. And I, I'm trying to improve as a surfer and others are too. And I hope more and more people get into you. So thanks for what you're doing, man. Yeah, man, you're welcome. And big shout out to the, to the Guiones and Osara surf scene, you know, because they yeah. are the project, you know, like ah, yeah. you, you are the project and, and I've gotten a lot of words of encouragement that got me through sometimes where I was like, ah, is it worth it? Maybe. I mean, not, not worth it, but it is difficult to continue. And, and it's, it's about this scene, you know, that's, that's the movie. The movie is well, about you guys. Hey, just feel free to use your part-time job at Nosara podcast to help those up and coming local male, female, all of them. Just go ahead and tap into that. And let's, let's have fun with this podcast too. Yeah. Let's bring some people in. Yep. Let's do a round table talking about surfboards or something. <laughs> Or we can argue, we can get people who are adamant about, oh man, we can have a lot of good debates and fights and arguments. That'd be good over surf styles. And yeah, that's a good one. 
That's uh, controversial. Well, we're, hey, let's let's get let's get further down the road. Then we'll, then we'll fight. But uh, all kidding aside, it, it, I, I love the healthy debates. Like I, I'd love to. I just want to have fun with all this stuff, man. I want to do more. I want to live my life a little bit more in the way that you are doing what I want. I've never done that before. So I'm, I look up to you and I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome, man. Yeah. All right. That is a wrap.